Give it up for Chad, the bird, and the science report. Happy holidays, humans. It's the most wonderful time of the year, or so Andy Williams would have us believe. He claims there will be kids jingle belling. And though to some who think in Hallmark specials, that might sound like a delightful moment to pause and take stock of how life is such a blessing. Sounds to me like those kids jangling shit outside are hiding something. Why would kids be jingling bells? They got Minecraft. I'd be suspicious as fuck if a bunch of kids ran past me jingling anything. Cause I wanna know where they got it and what they're distracting me from. Check your wallets is what I'm saying this time of year. According to Andy Williams, in addition to said youth jangling dingers in the snow, everyone will be telling you to be of good cheer and that can fuck right off. You ever had anybody tell you to cheer up and then you felt good after? No, of course not. Fuck you, guy. You cheer up. Go put some holly jolly smiles on. Tell me it's the most wonderful time of the year. Do it. I'll wait. So, yeah, see? You can't, Todd. You're in the middle of a fucking job search, lost your health insurance, and I guess you're not going to go hiking this spring until you figure that out. The kids are at Denise's parents because shit's too fucking heavy and she's out with her girls trying to drink away the pain. Ho, ho, ho! Yeah, now you're fucking sad, Todd. That's what you get for telling me to be of good cheer. Oh, it's the hap, hap, happiest time of the year, is it? You tell me that when your flight's delayed and the best hope you have of not starving to death is a pasta Milano at the macaroni bar and grill in Terminal 3. Andy Williams goes on to say... But there will be scary ghost stories. So at least he got something right. Because if you ever like driven at night to get anywhere in the winter holidays, it's cold, it's dark, it's too fucking quiet, 100% haunted. It's the most, it's like the ghost wonderful time of the year. You people in Indiana know what I'm talking about. That's why you spend your tax returns on holidazzle every year. Scare the fucking nightmares away this holiday season. Andy Williams does promise that there will be gay happy meetings, so I guess it's not all bad. <laughs> Plus, there's marshmallows. 2022's been a hell of a decade, huh? Did you, did you guys know that Moonfall, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, Thor Love and Thunder, and Sonic 2 all came out this year? <laughs> Feels like they came from long before. A simpler time, a more wholesome time, summer. Fuck, the Batman came out in March. And here I am thinking that weird movie where Chip and Dale ate Andy Samberg and John Mulaney was a fever dream I had after eating too much cheese one night. It's actually not the cheese. It could be anything. Having food in your stomach too late mixed with high anxiety levels can cause vivid dreams, and they're not going to be great. There's too much going on. It's the holiday season. It's been a ride, humans. And here now, at the end of the year, it is customary to reflect on all that has been before heading into the future. Do a big clean of the old mine palace, including the baseboards. Before the clock hits midnight, we try again. Fortunately, my mine palace is a studio apartment, so it didn't take too long. <laughs> and after a little soul swiffer and recap, I'll check in to see what my condition, what my condition was in. I found out I'm kind of hopeful. If you could listen to my aura right now via some fancy science, it would sound like the soundtrack to the Weather Channel. Breezy, smooth, light on the drops, synthy, and every now and then a saxophone solo while we get to local on the eights. For you kids in the audience that don't get this reference, I don't give a shit. Like I said, I'm super hopeful right now. Jingle your bells and Google it later. But it should not have taken an end of the year looksy backsy check in to note my current condition. All I needed is the fact that on Tuesday, December 5th, 2022, researchers at the US National Ignition Factory, or NIF if you're nasty, the world's largest nuclear fusion facility achieved a controlled nuclear fusion ignition, and that just put me right in the holly jolly Andy Williams kind of spirit. We should all be stoked. Because we've been working on this since the 1920s when Sir Arthur Stanley Eddington first suggested that hydrogen helium fusion could be the primary source of interstellar travel. And with a name like Sir Arthur Stanley Eddington, you better fucking believe you're gonna fucking suggest that hydrogen helium fusion could be the primary source of interstellar travel. See, like, nuclear fission was de rigueur back in the day. 
after Rutherford, Bohr, Marie Curie, fuck, every answer on the multiple choice physics test that you had in elementary school was fucking around with atoms. Figuring out what makes up the makeups to make everything down to the teenies. And once they figured out what an atom was and how nucleuses work, they figured the best thing to do was to smash the fuck out of them for the grams. <laughs> so nuclear fission is when you slam a neutron, before we get any brogans in the comment section, that's the little balls in the middle with the N on them you remember from the elementary school test. You smash them into an atom with enough force to split that atom into smaller atoms who smash into other atoms, causing a chain reaction. In physics, which is everything, so like also in everything, it's a fact that energy doesn't disappear. It changes. Emily de Chatelet proposed this and tested this back in 1730, and because she was a stone-cold badass, it's now the law. <laughs> so due to the law of conservation of energy, when you smash these atoms, that energy's gotta go somewhere, and go it does, right to the fucking prom in a limo on a private jet, baby. The energy is harnessed in reactors. They use uranium and ye old 80s action movie plot device plutonium to create the nuclear fission reaction, and then the energy is released, heats up the water into steam, and that steam turns a turbine, and bam, nuclear power. You humans have been distilling flash-boiled power tea served hot and ready since the 1950s. And it produces a ton of radioactive waste that is super easy to get rid of, just make sure it's in the alley by Thursday. JK, it's super fucking toxic, very dangerous, and needs to be stored for a long time because it kind of like jiggles the DNA a bit, and that's a great way to get cancer, which literally no one, no thing, not a goddamn speck of life wants around. So yeah, you got high power, low emissions, but also cancer juice. If only there was another way. Enter fusion. All sexy swagger, yet flirty and elusive, making it sexier. I'm, I'm fusion in this. Hey. Hey. Instead of splitting atoms, why don't you just like join them together and make bigger ones? It's how the sun works, and it's been working pretty well for a while now so far. Not a lot of calls to maintenance to check on the sun, so gotta be worth a shot, right? But here's the thing. It's hard as fuck to do. So when atoms get together and they smash into each other and hold on to each other, the energy released is more than fission, and you don't have the added issue of a ton of malted carcinoma frappes that come along with it. <laughs> you can see why this was the more ideal way to get things powered up, but the problem is, in order to get that sweet, sweet energy, you gotta mash atoms together, which takes a lot, especially this time of year, because nobody wants to get together. Why would you? I've seen how you've been acting. Plus, thanks to the internet, we got receipts. It takes up to, okay, hang on. It takes three things to get these atoms to accept each other in fusion. Temperature, density, and time, as it is for all of us in the world. The atoms need an insane amount of pressure and heat before they finally accept each other and get down to banging. And though like, we've done this kind of before, it takes a Mariah Carey Christmas level of energy to do it so that the ends justify the means. Until December 5th when the researchers at the NIF finally found the balance by blasting hydrogen atoms inside a canister no bigger than a BB with 192 lasers that gave the casing the controlled burn it needed to fuse these atoms and create a net gain of energy, meaning it got more out of what it put in. And isn't that what we all fucking want this time of year? <laughs> After all the shopping, the cooking, the crying, the forgiving, the sloppy makeouts, the hangovers, the gift exchange, and the flight home, the train ride, the cleaning, and the drinking to get us through all of it, don't we deserve a net fucking gain this most wonderful time of the year, Andy? <laughs> and looking back, on 2022, here now at the end of the year, the thought of getting together down to the molecular level and fusing with each other until a burst of energy and power exudes strong enough to warm the planet from space, that would indeed make this the hap hap happiest season of all. Thankfully, the good elves at the NIF have proven it can be done in such a way that we get something back. May that truly be said of us and all of us. So, as Andy Williams observed, may there be much mistletoeing May our hearts be glowing when our loved ones are near. And may you make this the most wonderful time of the year, because you deserve it. Here's to the future. I love you. Good night. Chad the Bird, ladies and gentlemen.